Okay, good morning, folks. Today we're going to talk about marking tools. Um, so, as you, those of you who have known us for many, many years, know that sometimes we like to get up on our soapbox and we know better than we are anybody so else. We're opinionated. very opinionated about things. So, we're, we've always been a big believer in less is less is best, except when it comes to food <laughs> and fabric and fabric. <laughs> Um, and not to, not muddying the waters. I mean, we have tools that we like, and if it, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of a concept. So what we want to do is just go through a couple of one of our favorites, and if we miss ones that are your favorites, we're very sorry, but we, we like what we like. That's all we can tell you. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with, basically when you have marking tools, you have either light fabrics or dark fabrics that you're needing to mark something on, either a straight line or a stencil something like that. So you kind of have to adjust your marking tools as to whether it will work on a light or a dark fabric. So one of our absolute favorites are the blue washable marking pens. So they come in either a fine line, that's for the younger quilters, yeah, or the regular, which is a thicker line, which is for our tired old eyes. And kind of the difference Hang between... on just one second, Marty. I just want to say, they used to be made by Collins, and that's who we carried for years and years mm -hmm. and years and years. Collins got up, bought out by Dritz, I believe. So we now, even Collins. though we we liked Collins, loved, loved, loved them, mm -hmm. but when they no longer became available, we have switched over to the Clover, which the are Clover. the, it's the same it's thing. It's the same stuff. Yes. It's like canned vegetables. It's the same candy factory. <laughs> they just slap a different label on them. Exactly. So what a fine line marker will give you is... A fine line. Is a fine line. Okay, and what these are, and the, obviously this is the regular one, is going to give you a little bit darker line. I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference between width of it. I'm, one, I think, is just darker than the other. And the way that you remove these is with water. Now, plain water, plain water, you don't want to wash them in a, you know, a soapy bath or anything like that. And what most people have objections to these are they say, well, they just keep coming back. Well, that means that you didn't saturate them enough that to actually get the the inks out of there. So what you can do is either take a squirt bottle and really heavily douse it or just wash it in plain water. That don't take a cloth and dab at it because it will go away, but it's not gone, gone. It will come back probably as it dries. And even if that happens, hit it again. Just, just it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It will go away. So it's not like it's staying. And that's the whole thing about really saturating it well and getting it out of there because it gets all of the marking um, liquid out of it. So that for those of you that are worried about that, then it's gone. But you don't have to use a gallon of water on no. a placemat. No. When we just do, use your judgment. Be common do, sense. When we do like wall hangings and stuff that we've marked things on, we do. We have a, a big old spray bottle that we just and really load it down and get it very nice and wet and it's gone it's really gone so these do work well now on the flip side of these guys are the purple markers and those are an air vanishing these are water vanishing the other ones are air so what they will do is they depend on the moisture in the air so the more moisture that you have i.e summer Humid. Humid. It will disappear quite quickly. <laughs> I mean, I had in one instance that I was marking a quilt and it was disappearing as fast as I could mark it. So that's kind of that. But in the winter, when your air is very much drier, it really takes a lot to get rid of it. So that's kind of the caveat on those guys. And, you know, I may be going through some of these and somebody's saying, yeah, but I really like the purple marker. Well, that's cool. You know, you you do you. I mean, do what works for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just giving you our two cents on things as we always do. The nice thing about the purple ones is if you have just a little, quick little two-inch spot that you mm -hmm. need to mark on it, yeah, fine, use it. But right. it, it's not that big of a deal. But just remember, it's going to depend on humidity. Right. Or you can you spritz it and it'll go off then? No, I no? don't believe so. Okay. No, it really is air. It's... It's the humidity in the air. So those are the blue washable <clears throat> markers. Then our other favorites are the sew line markers. So these are a mechanical pencil. And they will, you know, you can advance your lead. Watch, this is not going to come out. It did before, yeah. You can advance your lead. You can see that this is a white lead. And what they do is they refill through the top. So you just pull this out, dump more lead in there. 
and then pop that back in. And then it also has an eraser that kind of you can spiral out here. So if you are marking something along and you have just a very small mistake, you can just choo -choo -choo erase it and it's gone. You know, you can fix small things. I wouldn't want to erase a whole lot with it. These are also, and I want to make sure I do this before I say it, easily erased or dabbing with a damp cloth or washing so that they will wash away also. Another thing, and this is just an old um, standby rule of thumb. If you say, for example, took, Marty has some navy blue fa or fabric there. Mm -hmm. And if you did something and you didn't like the way it looked, don't take a piece of red fabric and rub mm -hmm. it off. No, you should use the same color of fabric to rub off. If you've got a whole bunch, rub off with the same color fabric. Mm -hmm. Don't use a different color fabric. Right, right. If that made sense to you, hopefully it did. <laughs> So the way the reason why I really like these is because again they're a nice fine line. You can see what I just drew here. And I like them because you can put out just a little bit of lead and it's not going to snap off on you. Or it doesn't get dull like those other ones that you right, spend that you more have time to keep sharpen. sharpening you and yeah and, and those, they get fat. <laughs> yeah. And these are very nice. And if you're working with a stencil, they obviously fit in between the lines very well. So that's in these come with many different color leads. There's the black, the white, or the graphite, the white, the teal, yellow. That we only carry in. the white and the. But we only go with the white and the graphite. Reason white and black. being in is that, um, and this this is um, scarriness from a very long time ago, the, there used to be like the marking pencils that you would sharpen, a yellow one, and we used it on a project, we never got it off. So that's kind of a old history for us that we just we don't run like scared. colors. Yeah, we run, <laughs> ran scared But you that. figured black and white are going to do everything that you want. White is going to work on dark, the black is going to work on the lighter ones, and all you need is one. Because you don't need to get a black pen and a white pen. Although no. you can, it's easier if you want to do that. It is easier. But at home, I just have one mechanical pen, and then you have the refills. So if I have my white pencil... Let me show you the refills. Then you have the refills... You don't need to take it out, Which Marty. you just pop in, a new, uh, pop in a new lead. Now, sometimes I find that you can't put just one lead in because it won't advance. So if that's happening to you, you've put a lead in and you're sitting there Wearing clicking it until you till the cows come home and it's not coming out, stick another lead in. And that, that seems to maneuver things the way that they need to, so it's gonna pop out on you. So black and white really is all you kind of need. So those are as far as pen, those are our favorites. Now a couple of other ones that are have been out for forever and ever and ever is I don't even know what do they call this thing. Oh, I can't think of it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> That's I been how long we've it. used it. it has it's a, a chalk aliner. Chalk aliner. Chalk aliner. He has a little wheel in, in the bottom of it, and this is filled with loose powdered chalk. Now that, now that you can see it in there, yeah. this is very old as you can see. But what, you, what it will do is if you're doing straight lines, it will deposit a line of chalk on there for you. Easy on, <laughs> easy off. So though. very easy. So... Okay, good things about it, it works very easily, um, and it comes off very easily because you can just kind of, or take another piece of fabric and just rub at it. Which, that can be a bad <laughs> thing, too, because if you're going along, your the cuff of your sleeve can wear it off. Right, or possibly, and that's the, the flip side of it, one of the bad things about it is if you've gone and you've marked several things, just the vibrations of the machine may bounce that powder out of there. And I know they make pouncers in where you put your stencil down and it's a, basically a square that you rub over the top and it's depositing the chalk. The same deal. Um, and I know some of them are a uh, heat, heat erase. So <clears throat> um, those are not my fave because, again, if you get into bigger things, then they just kind of disappear and you can't see them. So, so that's my thing. Now, a Hera marker, which is, this is a bone marker. Plastic. It's not really bone. I don't know what it's made out it of. It can't be bone. I can't believe anybody would allow bone. No, I wouldn't think so it's either. It's plastic. But you, it has a, a fairly 
sharp edge on it here. But I mean, it's not sharp, but it's sharper than the other side. I, it's hard to, but where I find these work really well is if you're marking things on flannels. Or homespuns. Or homespuns, or if you have something already layered up that has depth to it, some fluff to it. Because then what you can do, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on the camera or not. If you have like your straight lines that you're marking, you would have your ruler just bring that down next to it and you can see that it makes kind of a little bit of a crease so and and that does not need to be erased at all that's the plus plus so plus side this it. is it really has a limited use but it's one of those things when you need it you need it kind of a things i have had one in my drawer for forever and i do pull it out on a fairly regular basis um so that's those guys the last thing we're going to talk to you about is a different way of marking that really doesn't take any marking tools at all. <laughs> so what we do is, okay. Excuse me, I'm gonna interrupt you again. And that what I find works real, this technique works really well for, if you have a multicolored floral with, that has lights <laughs> and darks on it, it's very hard to get a marker that is gonna show on both light right. and dark. If you wanted to put a stencil over this block, this is a black and white quilt I went and pulled out of there. Thank you, Karen. Um, if you wanted to put a stencil over on this one, when you marked the stencil, you'd have to, over the light ones, do a darker pencil, and over the dark, use a lighter one. So that means you have to be flipping back and forth. But there's a different way that you can do it. This is called Quilting Paper from Golden Threads. And what it is, it's a very thin mylar, so it rips very easily. It's kind of like a newspaper-ish weight. But what you can do, and this is a stencil that I had this morning, and I know it's way too small for this, but you'll get the general idea. So if I wanted to put that stencil on there, what you can do is, uh, this is they come in different widths, but we like the 12. The 12 really just seems to work really well. And this just happened to be a six inch stencil. I did not plan that. And what I did is I went and I cut six inch squares. So I would cut six inch strips, cut it in half, and I did, say if I had to do 12, or if you had to do 20 or 30 of them, what you would do is cut that many squares. And then you layer them all up together. And then what I did is I stapled them in the corner. So boop, 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 boop. If you had a bigger stencil that you were working with, I'd probably do a couple in the sides also. And then what I did is I went and I marked my stencil onto the top layer with a pen. I mean, it's something that you can see really very well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the machine and I have put the biggest honkiness needle in here that I have. So this is a 9014, but if you have 116, do that. You're going to take your bobbin out. You don't want any thread in it and you don't want any thread in the top. And what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're just going to stitch this. So what you're doing, and this is going to sound kind of weird. Oops, yes, people caught thread out of there so it doesn't bob. Not only is this going to show you how you're going to be quilting these stencils, but what you're going to do is as you go all the way through, and you can see I'm going fairly close. You don't want, you don't want to go too, too close because then you're just going to have right. pieces of paper. But this is also, and you all know about muscle memory, this is going to start getting my brain and my hands used to this design. So what I'm doing is I'm perforating down through all the layers. And I'm not going to do the whole thing or else we'll be here for Thank forever. Thank you, my arm is getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you didn't cut your thread. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> so you can see that what it did is it's perforated through everything. And once I've stitched the whole thing, rather than breaking my fingernails, I just come in and I cut those um, staples. staples out. Thank you. Lost that word for a second. And then what you do is you go and you pull off a paper. And obviously, I don't have the whole stencil here, but... And then what you do is you lay it on top of your block. It's hard to see, but I know you get it here. Ink. Maybe on there it would be a little bit easier. Yeah. You can see where it's it started. There we go. Something like that. However it is there. And then all you do is you go back and you stitch them again. Over top of the paper. Over top of you the paper. You would pin the paper down. Yep. Pin it very well. 
pin it around the outside edge and maybe throw one in the middle too so that it doesn't move on you. And then as we said, this is a very thin mylar paper so it tears away very easily. So what the, this does for you is you don't have to sit there and draw right. 6,000 of your stencil. Right. You're just do, letting the needle of the because machine Because if, if I had finished this, yeah. I would have had 12 stencils already ready to go. So you're doing it that easily. So, I mean, this isn't something that I pull out every single day, but I find that it's very useful on certain projects. So we just wanted to kind of fill you in on different options for you. And as we've always told you, find what works for you. So is that all we needed to do this week? I think so. I can't remember, but that's, I that'll keep them, give them something to cogitate right. on. Play, play with that for a while. So, okay, we'll see you next week. Bye. As always, we forgot something. We decided because unfortunately it's inventory time of the year, we wanted to do some cleaning up. So some of you who used to come in would remember we used to do orphan kits. So if we had kits that maybe there was one, possibly two left over, we would discount them and um, give you a really good deal. There's nothing wrong with the kits. They were just the tail end. And we, as I said, Marty and I still have to count everything we do. So what we decided we were going to do, and Marty mouthed to me what we decided to do, 25% off the kits. So we will have a little separate section that will be called Orphan Kits. Um, I they're first come, first served. This. First come, first served. Yeah, when they're gone, they're gone. We won't, we won't be able to or be willing to make any more. So these will be the Orphan Kits. They'll be 25% off and they will be listed on. And we'll do it for a couple weeks. We'll see. We'll see. When we get everything cleaned up and counted, then we will... Decide what we want to do. We'll reassess. Okay? That's it. Bye.